What's up, family? It's me, your boy, your Urban Sports Guru. I just want to give you my reaction to uh, the games I saw in Week 14. Uh, those of y'all know, you know what I'm saying? I broke my foot yesterday. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just free act, freak accident. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing crazy. You know, I've been injured before. No big deal. I get past it. But um, some of the things I noticed from Week 14. Week 14 was a crazy-ass week. First and foremost, let's start with Kansas City. Jesus Christ. Give Patrick Mahomes the fucking MVP and let's get this shit over with. This dude makes throws that I only see him can make. He made a few throws that, like, I, the fact that I know that he made these throws on purpose, not just blind, deaf, dumb, stupid luck, is what blows me away. If there's, right now, if I could have any quarterback in the game right now, it would be Patrick Mahomes. Like, seriously, this kid, his talent is so just out of this world. So out of this world, like, for me, I think they're going to miss Kareem Hunt, but Andy Reid finally has the quarterback. He had a great quarterback in his younger years with Donovan McNabb. I don't think the organization did right by Donovan McNabb because they didn't give him receivers. When they finally started giving him receivers and all of that, then Donovan was a little bit older. You know what I'm saying? Then you have Michael Vick, who did your offense well, but injury prone. And Andy Reid has always been looking for that quarterback. You know what I'm saying? To execute everything that he diagrams up. Because he diagrams the, he cooks the bird up real good. He needs someone who can execute it out perfectly. And he finally has that guy with Patrick Mahomes. For years to come, that's going to be a scary, scary combination. Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. Very scary. Now, what else I noticed about this week? New England. I picked Miami to win that game, and they came with, came away with a play. They called the Miami Miracle. It made me look like a genius because I picked Miami to win. But here's the thing I thought about it. And great coaches. And sometimes even great coaches, Bill Pelichick, can overthink themselves. Now, he had Gronk in the game. That last play, normally you have a guy like that, a big athletic guy, to bat down and he Hail Marys. But it was way too far for a Hail Mary. When I, and it ended up biting him in the ass. It made me think of, you translated to basketball, another great coach, Greg Popovich. In that series against Miami, how it was a game six in Miami, San Antonio had him in that last play. Um, Tim Duncan wasn't on the floor. Why? Because they wanted everybody to be able to switch on defense. Ended up backfiring because they got LeBron got a shot, missed it. But guess what? Tim Duncan was on the floor. They didn't get the defensive rebound. Chris Bosch got the defensive rebound, kicked it out the right aisle, and he makes a three-pointer. And the rest is history. So you saw that game, and it's like something like that never happens to the Spurs. They're prepared for everything. They're prepared for everything because even sometimes the best coaches of all time overthink themselves and that's what happened right there greatest coach of all time bill belichick overthink themselves is like he dotted his eye twice instead of just dotting it once instead of realizing this is not a hail mary situation and you have Gronk. even if you want to still keep Gronk in the fact that you took out you put Gronk in to take out dexter mccordy take out someone else make sure dexter mccordy is there that's your best Safety. This man's been the Pro Bowls for crying out loud. Why is he not in? If you want to have Gronk in the back down the deep ball, fine. Why is McCordy not in? That makes no sense. And they paid for it. That's one of the things. Another thing I noticed. Um, big game in um Pittsburgh and Oakland. It takes an inconsistent enigma of a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers to go to Oakland and lose. And it just confirmed something, something I've been saying since last year. And let me stay for, for the record, once again, this is not, what I'm about to say is not something I want to see happen. It's something that I just unfortunately see going to happen. I've been saying this since last year, that if the Pittsburgh Steelers do not at least make the Super Bowl this year, Mike Tomlin will get fired. And I stand behind that. Unfortunately... And when I see shit like this, the fact that they can't stop anybody when it counts, 
when I see how they can't finish football games. I done posts early this season saying how I think Pittsburgh has set them up to fail. It all started with not paying Le'Veon. And all of these things are coming home to roost right now. And at the end of this season, when it doesn't come down to what they wanted to come down to, and at least being a Super Bowl appearance, but given all the talent this team has, somebody's going to pay for it. Somebody's going to be the scapegoat. And unfortunately, it's going to end up being Mike Tomlin. And it's not like there aren't certain things that you can point to him and say, this is his fault. This is, there are certain things. As much as respect as I have for Mike Tomlin, there are things we could point to him. And he's going to end up getting the brunt of it. Mike Tomlin is going to end up getting fired at the end of this year. And this past Sunday was just something that reconfirmed that in my head. What else did I notice in uh, this past Sunday? Get to the Rams. Now, I've been saying all season, I want to see what happens when the defense is able to take away Todd Gurley. Now, most of that was Sean McVay getting too enamored with the passing game. Because Todd Gurley had like, what, 11 carries. But when I look at the Rams office, and I've spoken about this plenty of times, they're so reliant on Todd Gurley for the simple fact I say this is that and they showed a stat during the game. They do play action more than any other team. So when we talk, we hear uh, fancy terms talking about scheming guys open. Play action is one of the ways you scheme guys open. And when you see them using play action more than any other team by far, and Todd Gurley gets so many carries, then he gets so many catches, then when he's not catching the ball, you're faking it to him. To get other people catches. So the second you take him out the game. Then what? Then let me see exactly how good Jared Goff is. When he on his own. Has to drop back 30-40 times and sling it. Then let me see something. And last night. He was worse than Mr. Jabisky. That's all I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not throwing shade. I'm just stating the facts as they are. I'm just stating the facts as they are. Because I like Jared Goff, but when I look at the Rams' offense, it's not an easy thing to do, given how good the offensive line is. You know what I'm saying? And given you know, Sean McVay is a very creative guy. But take away talk early. They do so much, hand it to him, fake it to him, throw it to him. Take away talk early. And you'll get somewhere. That's what Chicago did last night, and they put foot to ass. That Chicago defense, I mean, you put Khalil Mack, one of the best defensive players in the game, finally getting an opportunity to play on a defensive team. Beautiful. Beautiful. He finally gets a chance to play on the defensive team, which makes me think was so crazy. It makes me also think about the Oakland Raiders. Because John Rutten got rid of all these motherfuckers saying they're not ready now. Now, let's just analyze this for a second. If you think you have what you need at quarterback, Derek Carr, so you're solid there, the most important position. On defense, you have a former defensive player of the year. So there's nothing, are you sold on this? He's the former defensive player of the year just a year or two ago. And everybody with a brain knows how good he is. So you have a cornerstone of your defense already. And then Amari Cooper, if there was any doubt how good Amari Cooper, he's already been to two Pro Bowls. Only reason why he was these last couple of years because you're not getting them football. So it's like, you had these guys on your team and you got rid of them? What do you think you're going to do? Draft three, four more of them? What the fuck? You already have what you need. Build upon that. Don't get rid of these motherfuckers hoping you can wish and find someone else to be just as good. There's no guarantees for that. That makes no fucking sense. That's not intelligent. All these years you had a great defensive player, Camille, Khalil Mack, playing on bad defenses. Now you got one of the best defensive players in the game 
now playing on a team and a franchise whose identity is defense. Match made in heaven. And last but not least, the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Dallas fucking Cowboys. What I saw in that game. It's a lot of things I saw in the game. I saw some terrible officiating, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but what I saw is the Dallas defense is for real. All the way for real. And I'm being the one to say this. Dallas has what it takes to make it to a Super Bowl. But I'm going to, maybe a hot take, but I'm going to say to y'all right here, right now, what's going to hold the Cowboys back from winning the Super Bowl this year? What's going to hold the Cowboys back from winning the Super Bowl this year? It's Dak Prescott. When I look at this football team, they have damn near every component you can want. People say, oh, the offensive line ain't as good as it used to be. Maybe so. There's still two, three first-round picks you got on that offensive line. Still. One of the best running backs in football. If you did not know, you now know how good Amari Cooper is. When I look at Dak Prescott, it makes me think of the comments Jalen Ramsey said about my guy Eli, who I've been on the record said I think Eli's done. You can have a flashback every now and then, but I think he's done. Being a full year starting quarterback, I think he's done. What he said about Eli, he said, I don't think he's good anymore. I just think he has good chemistry with Odell. And this is what I'm seeing with Dak. I don't know how, I don't really know if Dak's that good. He just has good, great chemistry with Amari Cooper. You know what I'm saying? So, once team starts taking away Amari Cooper, as soon as you take away Amari, I think Dak going to be up shit creek without a paddle. When I look and see how y'all have so many other components, and that right there became a football game solely because of Dak fucking up. That should have never been. So many calls were going your way, and all the shit was going your way. That should have never, ever became a football game. But his fucking up is what made it a football game. When it should have never, ever been there. I'm telling you right now, you heard it here first, over Sports Google, Dak Prescott will be the reason why the Dallas Cowboys do not win a Super Bowl. You heard it here first, first from your boy, Urban Sports Guru. Let me know what you think. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Let me know what you think. Give me your thoughts. It's your boy. I'm out. Guru, salute.